I, little did I know he was an Alabama fan, and I was a Missouri fan, you know. But I, since he's convinced me to be an Alabama fan, so I roll tied with him. So we've kind of worked that out over over the years. Been retired uh, since 2001. How many years is that, Doug? That's about. Uh, Yes, yeah, 17, 17 years. years. If you need more help, you let me know. So, when, when you retire, one thing you have to do is you have to figure out what you're going to do to stay out of trouble as much as you can. And the, the handyman group was actually something that a friend started many years ago here at Trinity. He had a vision of uh, starting this handyman's group that would simply help other people that needed help. The other thing that Doug and I have found we have in common, though, is we both like to eat. That's why we were at that. Uh, it's obvious. That <laughs> then we, we talk about everything from the church to politics to service. I think it's important to seek your friends and be very selective. I always tell my kids, you know, run with the best people you know. You know, whatever the best people, wherever they may be. They may be on your football team or they may be your church, whatever. Just surround yourself with good people and hopefully it'll rub off. And to me, it, I find myself coming to the church. Not everybody in the church are saints. Uh, not everybody outside the church are not saints. Uh, but I find, by and large, my church friends, since I was a kid and I'm 71, you know, I find them to be in the church. And that's kind of the way it is. I care about somebody, which I care about him. You know, I'll listen to him. And he's shown me, you know, that if I have an opinion of something, he'll listen to me and then we'll talk through it. I think the first and foremost is you love everybody. And in our, you know, we are taught to love our enemies. We're taught to pray for our enemies. We are taught to reach out. I mean, you know, and, and in relationships, you have people sometimes with issues, but you love them and you love them to death. I think it starts out with brotherly love, Christian love first. I think it's second is that what you do is a pillar, in my opinion, is you find out what the other person's feelings are. I think Doug expressed a lot of that. Uh, we do listen to each other, and uh, we do try to learn from each other, and I think if the other has a need, we try to reach out and, uh, and help with that uh, need. I've had some health issues, and he's very supportive, prays for me and calls me and checks on me when I've got you know, some important appointments, and he wants to know how I'm doing. And he's always there for me. It's really interesting how we are, our wives are, and our kids and grandkids, how all this, because we're into the church family, and we're all in our own way serving. This is kind of a tradition of trying to work together and support each other during the good times and the times that are not so good. When you have good friends uh, that you can call on and you know they're going to be truthful and they're going to be helpful, that again is just part of this broader church family where it's important to develop the right friendships. But if I know somebody's a Christian and they approach things, well, what's not only good for me? Because I think that there's too much in society and too much, you know, what's, what's in it for me? What can I get out of it? And I don't think, I don't think Jesus taught us that. He said, lay down everything. He said, leave your family, follow me. We're gonna make fishers of men. And, and I want people that, that to hang around that will help me, you know, be fishers of men and consider not just what's best for Doug. The only way you can follow Jesus is to invite him into your life because he's knocking at the door, but you've got to open that door. Then that will help you to understand your relationship with other people. Well, I think the challenge uh, from what I can see is, is trying to figure out who you are. Before you know where you're going, you've got to know where you are. And before you can see what you can be, you've got to know who you are. Don't be so influenced by what everybody else is doing, but try to think through yourself, what do I want to do? Where do I want to go? Where am I now? Who am I? I think what David's saying, this journey is a lifelong journey. It, it begins, is, it is. It begins when you have the cognitive skills to start thinking about 
what you, who you are, what you want to be, and what you want to do within the world. And it goes, I mean, there's a 76 year old and 71 year old who are still singing the song or listening to the song. That's right, and, and every day's a blessing. Where are we going to go to eat next? <laughs>